Hello, this is Hayden Scott, Program Manager and Lead Instructor for EMS University San Antonio, also EMT Intermediate for the state of Texas. We are now going to review the airway. Um, just a quick physiology review, as you remember uh, in the prior chapter. Uh, oxygen exchange happens um, at the alveolar and capillary level. Um, this is where oxygen is pushed into the uh, bloodstream. The capillaries uh, then carry the oxygen into the rest of the bloodstream uh, to the cells. The cells uh, then take the oxygen and replace it with cellular waste um, for it to be removed out of the body. Adequate breathing rates for the adult, again, are 12 to 20 breaths per minute. For the child, is 15 to 30. And for an infant, it's 25 to 50 breaths per minute. Uh, remember the different rhythms, uh, Kussmaul, uh, Shane Stokes, ataxic, or biots respirations. Um, these are very um, important uh, things to remember when you're looking at the airway. Uh, also, respiratory quality. Um, uh, again, this goes with the uh, rhythms, uh, just how much oxygen are they getting in. Um, as well as tidal volume. Uh, how much uh, oxygen are they able to take in versus how much are they actually taking in? To open your airway, you'll use one of two methods. Uh, you'll use the head tilt chin lift, where you place two fingers um, right underneath the mandible uh, and your palm on the patient's forehead. You will then use the two fingers under the mandible to lift the head thus straightening and opening the airway. However, in cases of trauma or suspected trauma, you will then use the jaw thrust using two fingers of each hand behind um, the mandible to pull upward on the jaw while maintaining C-spine mobilization. Signs of adequate breathing, uh, you'll look for equal chest rise and fall. Um, looking for chest rise and fall is a way of determining adequate breathing. If you don't see much of a rise and fall, you know your patient's not breathing adequately. Um, you're also going to check for a respiratory rate of between 12 and 20 breaths per minute. Uh, you'll be looking for clear lung sounds bilaterally. Uh, of course, uh, you want to make sure your patient doesn't have any complaints of, complaints of respiratory difficulty. Your patient should also have warm, dry, and pink skin. Any variation on this um, is not a good sign at all. You should be aware, Do you have to take care not to insert a nasal or oral airway to provide positive pressure ventilation when the patient's airway is open and breathing is adequate. Uh, there is no reason for you to place any kind of airway adjunct uh, if the patient is uh, breathing adequately. Uh, this can cause severe injury to the patient. Um, it is unnecessary and it is a deviation from your standard of care you will lose your patch very quickly uh, should you perform anything like this. Inadequate breathing signs and symptoms. Uh, you'll see an unequal chest rise and fall or very minimal chest rise and fall. Your respiratory rate will be less than 12 or greater than 20 breaths per minute. Uh, you'll have some aberrant uh, lung sounds. These include wheezes, bronchi, crackles, otherwise known as rails, uh, etc. The patient will have noticeable difficulty breathing. They will be pale or cyanotic in appearance. Uh, usually cyanosis begins around the lips um, and the nail beds and progresses further. Uh, if anything beyond this is noticed, uh, your patient is in very, very serious danger. Uh, you'll also see a low pulse, pulse oximetry reading. Uh, patient with an SpO2 lower than 90% should immediately be treated for hypoxia. Um, depending on your patient's status, this could include, but not be limited to, um, either high flow O2 via non rebreather or uh, assisted ventilations with a bag valve mask. In patients with snoring respirations, it is important to first ensure that their airway is open. Uh, again, either by head tilt chin lift or by um, jaw thrust maneuver. Um, but always make sure that the airway is open and that the tongue is not impeding the airway. 
Inadequate breathing requires positive pressure ventilation and high flow oxygen administration, again, by BVM or by high flow O2 via non rebreather mask. To suction the airway, you first, as always, must have the proper BSI in use. Um, this includes gloves, mask, eye protection, um, could also include um, gowns um, if there's a lot of fluids or solids to be retrieving from the airway. Uh, you'll of course be suctioning out, like I said, solid or liquid obstructions. Uh, you've got two types of suction units, portable and mounted. Uh, portable units are usually battery operated, um, and then of course your mounted units will be uh, on board uh, in your ambulance. You'll have two types of catheters. You'll have the hard rigid or the uh, tonsil tip, yonker, or big stick, which is shown here in the picture. Or you could have your soft catheters, which are your French catheters. For adults, you'll use a rigid catheter. Uh, the Yonker is the best method. Uh, for pediatrics, the best is the French catheter. Um, the bulb syringes are generally saved for the infants and neonates um, because it is a low pressure suction and it's not as uh, aggressive. Um, and it's easier uh, for an infant or neonate to tolerate. Uh, the nasal suction, you'll definitely want to use a bulb or a French. Um, again, the bulb is a lot less aggressive, um, so it's usually tolerated better by your infants and your neonate patients. Um, you don't want to section any more than 15 seconds on an adult or five seconds on a pediatric patient, um, simply because it does put a strain on the respiratory system. You'll always want to rinse the catheter. Uh, usually, if you'll um, just suction a little bit of saline through it, it um, makes for a pretty good rinse. Um, once you effectively manage the airway secretions, it is always important for you to immediately assess or reassess breathing. Um, this way, you know whether your suction uh, technique was adequate um, and effective. For ventilation techniques, um, mouth to mask. Uh, can be the most effective. Um, however, you always have to be sure that your mask has a one-way valve. That way, if your patient uh, vomits or any fluids or anything comes out, uh, it's caught by that one-way valve and you're not exposed to any uh, bodily fluids. Uh, there's also the two-person BVM, flow-restricted oxygen-powered um, devices. There's the one-person BVM, however, maintaining good mask-to-face seal is extremely difficult with this method. In any of these techniques, you always want to make sure that the proper uh, BSI uh, is maintained. Uh, like I said earlier, yeah, your mask, you need a one-way valve and an O2 port. The BVM needs a pop-off valve and uh, 15 liters per minute of O2 uh, connection. Um, Otherwise, the BVM is absolutely useless. Um, so always be sure that you have the high flow O2 hooked up to it. Uh, the flow restriction it should only be used on adults only. Keep in mind, for any airway issues, um, loose dentures should be removed. Um, they could cause interference, and they most likely will cause interference. So if your patient is known to have dentures, uh, it's probably best to go ahead and remove those as soon as you uh, note, uh, note any airway issues. Your positive pressure ventilation um, without airway insertion is indicated in situations where a patient is able to maintain his or her own airway, but they aren't breathing adequately. Um, of course, uh, as mentioned earlier, adequate chest rise and fall is a sign of effective ventilation of the patient and respiratory arrest. So always uh, be sure. Uh, whether the patient is breathing on their own or whether you're assisting ventilations, that adequate chest rise and fall uh, is happening. That way you know that uh, adequate respiration is going on. Use your adjuncts whenever possible. The uh, nasopharyngeal um, airways are always forgotten about. Uh, nobody ever really remembers to use them. Uh, these are very effective for patients that have um, uh, 
some respiratory effort. Um, but again, it, it's um, it, it's a very effective uh, tool to use for airway adjuncts. Uh, the oral pharyngeal is actually the most used, especially prior to intubation. Uh, you'll see this uh, in use a lot of times uh, when your advanced partner is about to perform uh, an endotracheal intubation. It's always good to remember that oxygen is a drug. It is a medication. It is one of the best that you have on your ambulance. You will most likely come in contact with two cylinder sizes. Um, D, the D tank will usually be what's in your airway bag or on your stretcher. Your M tank will be the mounted tank that is on board your ambulance. Uh, this will be your central supply of oxygen for your ambulance, your wall units. Uh, be sure to handle these with care. These are pressurized tanks. Um, so if you let one drop and the, the valve gets damaged in any way, shape, or form, you now have a very heavy, very powerful missile on your hands. A uh, full tank will have 2,000 PSI, or pounds per square inch. Um, with oxygen, you can give either dry or humidified. Humidified, you just hook some saline up to it. Um, humidified is usually used more um, either uh, by nasal cannula for long term, or can also be used in um, a nebulizer for um, your high flow uh, means. As I stated earlier, oxygen can be given either via non-rebreather mask or nasal cannula. You can also um, give it uh, for your patients with a stoma. Um, they do have specialized mask for the stomas. If not, uh, pediatric mask works just fine. Uh, the G&E tanks also have the same PSI when full. Um, however, these are less um, common in the field. Here are pictures of the tanks. Um, as we said, uh, your D tank is the one that you are most likely going to have on board your ambulance. Uh, the E tanks generally tend to be for home oxygen use, um, as well as these smaller tanks, uh, the M2, M4, ML6, M6B, uh, M7, M9, and so on. Uh, the M iron tank will be the one that's usually mounted on your truck. The M tanks here uh, are usually for um, uh, refilling your D tanks and E tanks. This concludes the airway uh, chapter. If you have any questions, please direct them to the instructor of record. Have a nice day.